if you're fighting in the open field in rise of kingdoms and you see a william wallace a belisarius prime and a trajan which one should you attack first today we're going to talk about which commanders have the highest priority to attack first in rise of kingdoms but first what's going on guys cheers but first ladies and gentlemen i have breaking news i just got word that we have officially eliminated the ops that's right ladies and gentlemen this report comes to you live from new york city and who are the ops you might say well the ops are in fact my broken an air conditioner because today the air conditioner is fixed let's go okay that joke was horrible and if you think i'm stupid just drop a thumbs up on the video anyway let's jump into the topic of today's video and that is the attack priority in rise of kingdoms in the open field and what i'm talking about here is if you send out an army in the open field you're going to be able to see what the primary commander is of that army by looking at the avatar on the left here and if you're fighting enemies in the open field you're going to be able to see what their primary commander is as well now you can also see these secondary commander when they fire an active skill but that's a little bit harder to keep track of in a massive chaotic open field fight and so really I wouldn't rely on being able to accurately identify who every commander's secondary actually is but you can come to a pretty good conclusion based on the open field meta that is currently existing in rise of kingdoms and so today we're going to talk about that but I also want to give you guys some tools to help you understand where I'm getting this strategy from because as you guys know the meta in rise of kingdoms does change over time as they add new commanders things will change and so I hope that in this video you'll learn how to identify what the best targets are going to be right now and also in the future and this is especially important now with recent changes to the game over the last couple of months because yes of course you can always see what commander you might be hitting but a lot of players fight in what's called dot mode right where you zoom all the way out and all you see are dots on the screen but recently the developers have implemented what's called strategic view and you now have the ability to see the troop type of the commanders that you're actually fighting with and against in the open field and so here you can see my Liu Che Alex shows up as an infantry icon because it's filled with infantry units and it's important to know that the icon that you see here resembles the troop type that you're fighting against and it has nothing to do with the commanders of course typically an infantry commander will have infantry units behind it and a cavalry commander will have cavalry units behind it so 99 percent of the time you're going to be able to know exactly what type of commander you're actually hitting even though this is just showing you the units but there is a distinction here and the reason that I'm bringing this up is because we'll talk about this later in the video but some people do try to manipulate what is actually shown on their troop view so stay tuned until later so we can talk about that but since we know that like 99 percent of the time the infantry icon is going to have infantry commanders in it and the same is typically going to be true for cavalry and archers then we can kind of have a good idea as to what commanders we might be hitting when we choose to attack either an infantry archer or cavalry army so if you're attacking an infantry army in the open field for example you're probably going to be hitting either a William Wallace Liu Che Scipio Prime Guan Yu Alex or Gorgo right like these are the six most common infantry commanders that you would be seeing in the season of conquest and so with that information again you don't necessarily have to know like who's the primary and who's the secondary but you can kind of have a general idea as to what might be involved when you're hitting that infantry icon in strategic view if we think about archers who might be the most common archers well of course we have Zhuge Liang we have Herman Prime we have Asher Bonapal we have Boudicca Prime we have Nebu we have YSG I'd say these are the most common archer commanders that you would see in the open field today at the time of recording this video and then for cavalry we have of course Nevsky Joan Huo Belisarius William and maybe even a Zhang Yu if somebody's running three cavalry armies for example and so with this information we can take a look at each set of these commanders and figure out okay well which set of these commanders as a whole has the most problematic commanders that need to be removed from the open field at any given time and the correct answer and please pay attention this is the most important thing the troop type that is most important to hit in the open field is the one that is closest to your army so when I'm open field fighting and I'm controlling my five armies or for you maybe it's four armies or three armies whatever even if you're fighting with just a single army whichever 
enemy is the closest to your armies is the one that you should be hitting okay this is the tier zero like the most priority highest priority default rule of thumb okay and the reason for this is because hitting a target is better than not hitting a target okay think about every moment that you're not hitting something is every moment that you're not inflicting damage to the enemy and for example if you aren't hitting them maybe they're hitting a nearby ally and getting off their aoe skill damage right and now you're actually taking damage by just being close to that enemy and you're not getting any value there because you're not hitting them back okay so every moment moment that you're not hitting something is a moment where your DPS or your damage per second is zero. Additionally, if you start to attack an enemy, their screen starts flashing red and they have two options. One, they can start to hit you back if they can figure out which army in the massive ball of armies is the one hitting them and of course it'll be all of your armies not just one most likely and they can either hit you back or they can pull away and they can run back into their ball of friendly armies and typically that's what players will do they will start to attack something and once their screen starts flashing they'll retreat back into their ball that way they're not the ones constantly being hit and this forces players to go in and out of combat and you kind of see that if you're paying attention in dot mode you'll see armies kind of fluctuating back and forth at you know if players are paying attention that is because nobody wants to be overextending into the enemy ball of armies because then you're just going to get swarmed down and you're not going to be able to retreat in time and you'll be dead so the number one rule of thumb is always hit what is closest to you okay but let's say you're hitting the enemy that's closest to you and they're not hitting you back and they're trying to retreat for example well in that scenario then you're getting your normal attacks off right and they're counter attacking you but they're not getting their normal attack damage on you and they're also if they're not hitting anything they're not generating a rage and so they're not firing their skill shots whereas if you're connected to them than you actually are and so in a world where they're not hitting you back then your trade's going to be good pretty much no matter what the army is now there's some armies that have like really high counter attack damage and there's all that sort of exceptions but like 99 percent of the time if the enemy is not hitting you back and you have your three four five armies hitting them you're going to trade positive no matter what that enemy actually is and if they do stay in fights it'll still probably take them a few moments a few seconds for them to realize who's actually hitting them and to hit you back and when they do that then you can retreat into your ball of friendly armies and you'll still probably trade positive at least as an average over time okay so now that we've established that the most important enemy to hit is the one closest to you what if you have multiple enemies that are basically within the same distance as you like let's say you're approaching a ball of enemy armies and you have the choice between hitting an infantry unit an archer unit or a cavalry unit my number one recommendation would be to hit the archer units and I know that this is going to drive the archer main players crazy but they already know that they were the number one target okay you know it I know it everyone knows it archers are the number one most important type to be hitting in rise of kingdoms okay and the reason for this is because of the culprits that we see in this grouping okay first of all we have Yue Liang, which is a massive five target circular aoe with a super powerful debuff on the active skill and his secondary is typically Harmon prime who has a powerful three target aoe with the poison stacks which is a very powerful aoe debuff and so this singular army right here is the most important army to remove from the open field on top of that archers right now are in a unique position where they actually are oftentimes the slowest things on the battlefield which a lot of the times has been infantry historically because infantry units literally have a slower march speed than any other troop type that's just the data but infantry can make up for it in a couple of different ways for example like alexander the great has like 30 percent march speed okay which is crazy especially when paired with liu che who has 20 percent also the legendary set of infantry gear gives them a four piece set bonus with 10 percent extra march speed and so there are a couple of ways that infantry can increase their march speed to be a little bit faster than some of the culprits here in the archer tier also if you look at the commanders that are involved here archers have five commanders that are aoe skill damage okay Boudicca prime being the only one here that doesn't deal aoe skill damage and if you look at infantry they have three aoe commanders okay and cavalry also have three aoe commanders and one of them isn't even that 
common anymore like you don't see Zhang Yu very often these days okay so really most likely they have two which means on average in a massive ball fight the dps or damage per second for the archers is going to be the highest if they're left unchecked right if they're just left there they're just going to be dealing massive amounts of aoe damage and in Boudica prime's case okay she actually has a really powerful debuff on her active skill which causes a target to take more skill damage so even though she's not an aoe commander her debuff is very powerful you want to get rid of her as well and so not only do archers have the highest dps right now just on average with their aoe but they also have some really powerful debuffs, not only from Boudicca Prime, but also from Zhuge Liang and Herman Prime as well. And on top of all of that, out of all the AoE commanders here, only one of them is a three target AoE. The rest are five target AoEs. Okay. And we also have two circular AoE commanders here, which is insane. Okay. So hopefully you understand why archers are the number one priority target. They have good debuffs and they have the highest AoE damage. It just open and shut case. Like you have to kill the archers first and they're going to have a hard time getting away because they're pretty slow. Now, if there's no archers nearby and you have the choice between hitting an infantry army or a cavalry army which of these two should you be hitting well these two troop types are much closer in my mind than the archers right like archers are a clear number one target infantry and cavalry are kind of close together i would say for me personally i typically go for the cavalry first and that's just because i feel like a lot of cavalry armies are a little bit squishier than infantry armies however it's not that simple right because the thing about cavalry is that they are the fastest troop type and so if you prioritize the cavalry army and they're paying attention then they're going to retreat and if you're connected to that army they have a higher probability of pulling your army into the enemy ball and so your exchange with that cavalry army might be a little bit shorter than your exchange with an infantry army right you might be able to stay connected to that infantry army a little bit longer especially if they have something like a gorgo in there who is just very very slow additionally even though infantry armies do seem to be a bit more tanky they also seem to have a few more high priority targets what i mean by this is if we look at commanders like guan yu Scipio prime and alexander the great these commanders all have really powerful debuffs right we have a silence effect on guan yu which is aoe we have a aoe health debuff on the active skill from cpo prime and we have a 30 percent damage taken increase on alexander the great but on top of that we also have the smite talent tree from william wallace which will cause enemies hit by smite damage to lose 45 rage right and at the time of recording this we don't know if that will work aoe or not but even still even if it only hits one target at a time an enemy rage reduction is very powerful and so in a world where four of these commanders have really good debuffs and you compare that to the cavalry well we have a really powerful defense debuff on Nevsky it is only single target though and we have a really powerful single target debuff on Belisarius Prime with his expertise causing the target to take way more extra damage when surrounded really like that's kind of it right mostly we see cavalry units buffing themselves and nearby allies so for example Joan of Arc's active skill gives your armies and nearby friendly armies and a buff same thing with William for example Zhang Yu does have a AoE defense reduction but again Zhang Yu is probably the least common out of any of these commanders here and so I put less weight on that debuff but the debuffs that are available to cavalry units are typically single target debuffs whereas the debuffs that we know we have with Guan CPO and Alex can hit multiple targets at least three targets right uh, especially with Alex it's just instantly chooses three nearby targets they don't even have to be in like a cone shape for example now moving forward we might see less Alexander the Great now that William Wallace is coming to the game but that is yet to be seen we don't know 100 for sure how many players are going to bench the Alex for William Wallace he might be a slight upgrade he might be a massive upgrade we don't really know I suspect he'll be a slight upgrade over Alex and so we might still continue to see a lot of Liu Che Alex in the open field but that's a topic for another video my point is the infantry are slower than the cavalry and they have more high priority targets in my opinion so even though the cavalry you might be able to trade better against them maybe uh depending on their gear and stuff like that the infantry probably should take priority if you have the choice between hitting one or the other because you're probably going to be able to stick to that army and continue to hit it for a little bit longer than you would the cavalry now again in my experience i'm probably still gonna go for the cavalry just because i like to risk hitting those squishy targets right like if i get a zhang Yu baby that trade is incredible but in general i would say the infantry 
infantry are probably a higher priority overall so all in all this is probably the way that I would prioritize these targets archers being number one infantry being number two and cavalry being number three with the understanding that whoever's closest to you is actually the priority and cavalry and infantry are much easier to exchange in that priority list than archers archers are pretty much always going to be number one priority but that's not really where the story ends right because we also have engineering commanders we have the ranged units and historically if you saw an army with siege especially back when margaret and bobber were the only ranged commanders then you would know that being able to hit that target means you would get an exceptionally good trade these days with gonzalo and with gajamata uh, especially if you do something like margaret with gonzalo or gajamata with gonzalo if the player that is playing in ranged mode okay if they have good gear and good armaments you might not actually trade all that well if you are able to hit that ranged unit even if it is still stationary additionally ranged units are hitting you at range which means that you probably can't hit them unless you have good field presence right and so you don't want to be running into the enemy ball of armies uh, just to hit a ranged army because if it is a super powerful Gajamata and Gonzalo then you might not trade that well anyway and also you you're running deep into the enemy territory you're going to get swarmed down and you're not going to trade well regardless now in that scenario if you do go straight for the ranged army uh you kind of can be like a martyr and essentially just remove that ranged army from the field for a little bit so it goes back to the city then they'll send it back out again and so you're kind of like saving everyone else around you from being hit by that ranged army if that makes sense and so on a whole perhaps you're trading more positive as an alliance right or as a as a camp or coalition right in that fight but for you personally you probably won't trade very well especially if you're running deep into enemy territory so my suggestion is probably don't hit the ranged units or engineering units until you are close to them and once you are then it's gg and you can take them out and it'll be no big deal now the fifth icon you might see out in the open field is actually a mixed army and typically you might think that this mixed army is a Trajan right because what other commanders are you really going to run a mixed army with but that might not be the case so for example if you run a Trajan Mulan and you have uh, three different troop types in there and then you zoom out here you're going to see an integration icon which is interesting you would think that it would be a leadership icon right but I don't know I guess they just picked they picked integration it is what it is maybe it's because rallies have flag icons historically and so they didn't want to confuse people I don't know but regardless a mixed army shows up as the integration icon and so if you see this there's a chance that the integration army is a Trajan Mulan or a Trajan something right and typically in the past I've always recommended that players avoid hitting Trajan right there's really no value in hitting a Trajan he is very tanky over time and yes he is very supportive he is buffing all the nearby allies but really if you're hitting a Trajan then all of the enemy's DPS armies are still at full health just pounding you while you do that right and you're probably not trading that well against the Trajan anyway because he stacks his defense so much and so really Trajan is not a priority he's not like it's just not worth hitting the Trajan you're better off killing all the DPS armies and then all that's left is Trajan and he can't buff anything because there's nothing there to buff so historically Trajan is not a priority he's like the last thing you want to be hitting but that's not really where the story ends because because if I retreat my Trajan also not to mention just a side note um Trajan boosts skill damage and we have a lot of smite damage going on these days as well now it's only for you know infantry and engineering but still there's just fewer skill damage commanders out in the field right now it's still mostly skill damage so Trajan is still good but there's just a little bit less of it is what I'm trying to say but the reason that this isn't so cut and dry is because of the way that the game handles mixed armies okay here we have my Minamoto which everyone knows is a cavalry army but what if I remove one unit of cavalry and I throw a single infantry unit in there okay let's go ahead and do that actually let's do let's do something else let's actually add a single tier one siege unit okay we send out that army and we zoom out and would you look at that it is an integration army interesting so that means that this is a mixed army and technically that's true there's two different troop types here but what happens if the siege unit the tier one siege unit gets injured in battle like let's say it's a severely wounded unit or a slightly wounded unit or whatever like surely the moment the moment that I start hitting anything that single tier one is going to be out of the battle right like because it's the weakest unit in the entire army 
and typically that would be the first thing to die in an actual fight not die but you know what i mean get wounded get slightly or severely wounded or die if your hospital's full right but as you can see here as we start fighting even though like that single uh siege unit is nowhere to be seen okay if i zoom out we're gonna see that it is still an integration army okay so what's actually going on here well let's jump into the city and we can take a look at the hospital and there is our battering ram okay our tier one siege unit is literally in the hospital it is no longer here it is in the hospital and yet it's still an integration army now what this means is um, that single siege unit is part of this battle okay um and so if i run away let's let's well actually you know what let's let's just finish it let's save my ap let's actually use my ap get the kill okay let's finish this battle and see what happens to my troop icon now that the siege unit will no longer be involved okay come on minamoto let's get it done baby let's get it done i should have put a secondary here okay so the battle is over i got my battle report okay we can see that the single siege unit was severely wounded okay and we can of course come into here and we can see that it is still in my hospital and so now i'm no longer in battle and the siege unit is no longer here and so this is no longer a mixed army but if i zoom out it's still an integration icon so what this means is this is a 100 cavalry army that is disguised as a mixed troop type army interesting okay very interesting so let's bring this back to the city and what what can we learn from this well first of all if your alliance wanted to be a bunch of trolls then you could all set up all of your armies with all a single tier one unit in them no matter what that unit is it could be cavalry infantry siege whatever a single tier one unit and then everyone's army will show up as an integration army in dot mode which would be hilarious but the players that benefit the most from this are the archer players right because now they take their archer army which is everyone kind of agrees is the number one priority and you turn it into a mixed army integration icon and so then people don't know am I hitting an integration like mixed army like a Trajan or am I hitting an archer unit and so typically the players that are most likely to sort of abuse this little glitch of the icons are going to be the archer players right because they seek to gain the most benefit here right they they don't want to be targeted in the open field they want to be left alone because they're slow and the more that they're staying on the battlefield the more damage they're dealing and so a lot of times if you see that integration icon sure it could be a Trajan but it's probably an archer army and so with that information what you guys can understand is it's probably worth hitting the integration army right it could be a trajan but it also could be a ysg and you definitely want to take that risk you definitely want to go for it especially because it's satisfying to know that the player that is abusing this mechanic right the archer player that doesn't want to be seen as an archer icon they're hoping that they're not targeted and so what you can do is the one thing that they don't want you to do which is target them right and so like now i have even more of an incentive to hit you because you're trying to cheese the game and i'm just gonna feel good about killing you like that's just how i see it personally right like i take it personally i'm like oh you think you, you think you're, you think i'm stupid okay i see you and then you just destroy them anyway so remember kids if you see an integration icon on the battlefield it could be a trajan but it's probably a cheesy archer player and you should probably slap them just for trying and that's pretty much it for this video guys if you enjoyed it drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so all the rise of kingdoms players might see it consider subscribing to the channel if you're new here and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and if you have anything to add any tips or strategies about targeting enemies in the open field drop them in the comments section below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace